I want to share with you an amazing story that took place a long time ago in Russia. The Jews of Russia have often had a very difficult time living there with a lot of anti-Semitism against them and very difficult circumstances that didn't always allow them to live a Jewish life or if they did want to live a Jewish life, they had to do so secretly. Otherwise, they risked death, imprisonment and other punishments. There was, however, after the First World War, a short time period where the Jews did enjoy quite a lot of freedom in Russia, and this was under the rule of the Mensheviks. And during this time, there was a Jew in Russia who had become quite successful working as a diamond merchant. And one day he was on his way to the diamond exchange where he worked, and he saw a man standing on the side of the road outside a synagogue, and he said to him, I, I need you to be the tenth man for a minion. Yeah, as you know, when, when a Jewish person wants to say Kaddish, the special memorial prayer on the anniversary of uh, the death of somebody in their family who's passed away, they need a group of ten men to be able to say that special prayer. And this particular man had Yahtzeit. He was remembering his father, and he needed a tenth man to come so that he could say the Kaddish prayer. So the man wanted to do a mitzvah, a good deed, and even though he was in a rush and a hurry and he was trying to get to work, he agreed to come in and to be the tenth man for the minyan. But when he went inside the room where the prayers were going to take place, he realized that the man hadn't been completely honest with him. He wasn't the tenth man. He was only the sixth man, and they still needed four more in order to be able to complete their memorial prayer and to say the Kaddish for the person who passed away. And he turned to the man and he said, I don't have time for this. And the man said, please, 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 just wait a minute. I will get the other men and we'll be able to say the prayers and you'll be on your way. And so the man thought, okay, it's really important to him. It's an important mitzvah, I'll wait. More time went by, another man came in, then another man, and then another, but they were still one man short. They still didn't have enough for him to be able to say the prayer. And he said to the man, look, I wanted to help you, but I have to go. I'm running really late for work. I don't have time for this. And all of a sudden, the man that had been helping turned really nasty. And he said to him, no, you have to stay here. If you were saying outside, if you were saying Kaddish for the outside of your father, I would stay here for you. I'm not going to let you out of this room until we have a tenth man and until I can say Kaddish for my father. He could see that there was no arguing with the man. He was really upset and very determined that everybody should stay in the room until he could say the Kaddish prayer. Finally, they were able to get a tenth man to come in and they could begin their prayer service. And much to the, our man's horror, not only did he say the Kaddish, but he also wanted to say some Tehillim, some Psalms. Um, and afterwards, he wanted to have a Lachaim and some food in honor of his father. And by the time our man gets to go to work, it's really, really late. He's running really, really late. And he starts to walk, and as he approaches the diamond exchange, he sees a man he knows running towards him who says to him, turn around and go home. The Bolsheviks have overthrown the Mensheviks. Yeah, there's been like a revolution and a groups come in that don't like the Jewish people. They've come to the diamond exchange this morning, a whole group of them, and they have been beating up and killing the Jewish diamond merchants and stealing all of their merchandise. Turn around, run around, go home now. And when the man retold the story, it was retold to the Maggid of Jerusalem, Rabbi Shalom um, Shvodron. And when he was telling the story, he said, you can only imagine what would have happened if I'd been at work that day. And all that saved me was being part of this mitzvah, which I didn't even want to be part of. You know, I really wanted to run away and go to work. But in the end, I stayed. And that decision to stay and be part of the mitzvah was what saved my life. He lay low for a few days and he was eventually able to escape Russia and start a new life. And he credits the fact that he was able to start that new life and that his life was saved with the power of that mitzvah. It gives us an amazing lesson. We never know the power of a mitzvah. 
We never know when we do a good deed for something else what it might be saving us from or how it may be helping us in our lives. And so the power of a mitzvah is something we should never underestimate. Just like this man where the mitzvah saved his life all those years ago back in Russia.